portal guys it's the triple option and it's portal madness we've got a lot of stuff to talk to you about i'm excited i know my two my two compadres are excited it's the college football season's over but things are still popping off for mike Norvell's florida state seminoles that's right adam made a noise so he gets to go first how you doing ab i'm great baby let's go i i mean we're gonna break down some film with some studs tonight It'll be nice. It's the slow time for college football. It's not back for like another 220 whatever days, whatever like sad number tracker they show after the national championship game. But we got film to break down here on the triple option. Kev, how you doing? Oh, man, I'm doing pretty great. Uh, Good. I think uh, we're <laughs> a little bit Georgia late fan. on on breaking down these uh, breaking down these guys, but um, they're exciting. They're exciting uh, gets here. The only reason that we're late is because they keep piling it on. We planned on doing this video like days ago. Boom, another transfer. And then we're going to do it then. Like, boom, we're going to add another transfer. (laughs) It's just they keep adding and adding and adding. So we're going to talk about three massive transfers at three pretty big positions in need. We're going to talk about West Virginia wide receiver and special teams return Mm. specialist. Put gears up. Winston Wright. We're going to talk about UCF linebacker. That's right, folks linebacker tatum bethune a very interesting name uh i like it and then i don't know if you want to say the best for last but you're you are literally talking about one of the best prospects in the entire transfer portal university of albany defensive end standout jared verst the pride of the great danes of upstate new york i am stoked i am so they got you i am so excited I said, let's get right to the film. Yes, film me let's up. Jump in. Where are we going, Kevin? Let's pull up the first guy. You want to? You want to go to the old country roads? Go out to a uh, coal country. Let's go to West Virginia. Bam. Yep. Here's Winston Wright. So in this film, uh, someone already cut this up for us. Uh, it's thank just, you, Circle Man. This is not this year, but but last year, um, and it's just cut ups of all of the plays that he was involved in. So, oh, that's cool. He might not necessarily like here. He's blocking on the backside, so he's, he just kind of whatever. Nice to but. see his nice to see his energy and what he's going to be involved in. He's the only one standing out there blocking anybody. I like that little end around action. Heavily involved in the motion game, right? Yeah, it seems That's, like they they really threatened getting him out in space. So here's here's something that um, is of interest. So this is something yeah. that Norvell likes to do, which is this little uh, slot slot fade here so you got right here running a fade out to the corners then you got two in routes um so it's really just looking for a one-on-one matchup on the safety uh and kind of what you see is he gets absorbed by the safety a little bit so he gets bodied uh, potentially something that needs to be worked on because that's a route that fsu struggled with last year and um you're hopefully trying to address that problem and you said this was 2020 film, right, Kev? Yeah, this is his sophomore, sophomore year. Sophomore year, yep. Yeah. yeah. So you hope that uh, he's developed some since then. I know, I know he had a pretty good year lot this past season. Decent yeah. blocking for not a huge guy. I yeah. mean, Listed like 5'10", 5'11", I think. Yeah. Right, so a, a little bit of that bodying is expected, but um, yeah. some hand fighting you'd want to see. Here he does Fair. a little bit better job getting, getting open yeah. downfield. You can kind of see... At the top of the screen here, he's yeah, kind of he's got a step. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, that's the kind of speed they need. We know we've they've been lacking that from uh, guys like Keyshawn Hilton. We saw some of that from Jakai Douglas, but Jakai's still a younger receiver. He hadn't played wide receiver uh, much in his life, so it's a guy that's developing. There's mesh there. You get a look at <laughs> they, it. There they, you go, Kev. Just they, for you, they really meshed right into each other. Yeah, literally. He's been a productive slot for them, though. So, I mean, I, I, I anticipate he's going to come in here and be one of the better uh, wide receivers. Of course, their wide receiver course basically all transfers now. Well, that was the rub, right? It was like all the other guys were high upside. Ooh, there we, there go. we go. Good catch, Brosif. Uh But this was a guy who actually had the production that fans mm-hmm. were clamoring for. And yeah. a pretty decent set of mitts right there. Not the best throw. Good catch. Let's see this route. Yeah, so it's just a slant route. He stems... Stems well inside. Tacks that outside hip, gets that kid to open. Yep. Comes back underneath. Right. Here you see that step, gets that linebacker to 
I guess it's a safety uh, to take that step out. Wins inside. You'll see later in the film, uh, very similar. He He's pretty good at those little slant routes. There's another one? Yep. Yeah, Open. That is a, Quarterback yeah. just missed him. It'd be nice to have somebody that can win one-on-one matchups on the inside and try to uh, there get was some breathing a, room for the big dudes on the outside. There's right? a look at there's a look at the at the uh, slot fade again, the opposite side. He does a better job of getting getting around him here. Yeah, and you can see that him. step runs right by him. He kind of starts. It looks like he's gonna kind of head inside, and then he takes a step and crosses the face. He looks like a guy you might need to do more movement with. Uh, oh, now they're open seems... again, dude. He eats on that route. And this is against a good team, Oklahoma State. Yeah, with a good defense. We did not win that route at all. We won no routes last year. <laughs> um, but no, like, like this is nice, though, right? Like, Yeah, yeah, this is this is exciting. He oh, no, That route again. Um, I'm interested to see who's going to be coaching him in the wide receiver room. That's a discussion for another day, but uh, I would like these route running skills to not regress. Yeah, it's it's nice to have someone Jesus, that you don't have to worry about development for in the wide receiver room. No, obviously, we... this passing game is a little different from what we see at Florida State. Um, I mean, they they feature the passing game there as opposed to... He's double teamed here. <laughs> So, yeah, they got they got bracket on him. Yeah. Bracket coverage here, so this linebacker and the safety are double teaming him, and he's just gonna cross cross the safety's face. Oh, dude, tried to hold him too. Nope. See ya. That is lovely. Um and the wheels to finish. We obviously I don't know if we're pro or anti Jordan Travis on this podcast. We don't really pick sides. We just watch the film and let it tell the story. Uh, this is a kid that's going to get open over the middle of the field. Do we think the Florida State's got the right quarterback to take advantage of those middle of the field throws based on what we saw at the end of last year, guys? Um, if he's that open, I would hope that Jordan Travis could make that throw. <laughs> yeah, dude, right. <laughs> it, it hasn't, I, mean, I mean, it hasn't been a staple of their offense to date. Right. Exactly. So is that because of Jordan Travis? Is that because of the offensive line and the lack of their confidence and their ability to, you know, hold up and give time? Uh, well, for those things that to develop? can't physically run that route and that, it all the time. That too. Um, so I, I think that's still to be determined, honestly. Uh, that's fair. I thought Jordan made a lot of progress his last few weeks. Um, sure, they, me too. He he was around a sixty percent passer over the last two games when they really kind of featured the passing game because they couldn't run the football. Uh, I I think that there's still some upside there. We'll see where his strengths are going to lie uh, as far as a thrower. And he he did seem to get more decisive as the year went on. Yeah. But, uh, man, we got to start taking advantage of the middle of the field more, and this yeah. is a weapon to definitely do that for sure. Yeah, they certainly. We'll they certainly invested in the, in a couple of these slot type wide receivers. Yeah. Tonight. Him and Pittman, him and Pittman is, are going to yeah. make a nice productive combo. Oh, here is you that go. our guy right there? Yeah. Fight yeah. Let's go back to that. So I think it's just a post over the middle of the field. I think this is him. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah. So the question is for me, is it, was it Jordan Travis was the offensive line or was it with a wide receiver core? I mean, those, those little short routes take a lot of technique and ability to get open in a small amount of space. So uh, I think we'll have that answer pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, I think this kid right. looks fearless. He's not afraid to go in, in, no, in the tight, at all, tight spaces. right? And he really understands spacing well as far as like had splitting the defenders, even how they're bracketed him and everything like that. It's very, it's an impressive watch. I like the kid for sure. Yeah, this is one you're you're happy to have that connection between he and the and the Deloge family. Maybe that helped you get him in. Um, All right, Papa Rob, much appreciated. <laughs> <laughs> Was apparently given some tours. Was well, he okay? Not by the coaches. It's a dead uh, period. Obviously, obviously, we do uh, things wonderful. street legal. Good All catch. Right. He's a tough little. He's yeah. a tough little jit, yeah, as they say. Oh, thrown out the the the, yeah, the, the slang, lingo. the lingo yeah. there. That's right, dude. I'm his I'm game cool. is his game is fire. All right. So you so it if for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> they just erased that one from Urban Dictionary. I like it. No, now it's back. You you brought it back. Adam. What were you saying, Kevin? I'm sure you wanted to talk about our our lexicon, right? Yeah. No, I was going to ask you. I was going to ask your opinion. Um, if the season were to start today, who do you think? Do you think? Where do you think he falls in the depth chart? Number one. 
Do you think he's the, the number one receiver on the roster as it the stands The number right one now? slot, you mean, right? Like, how would you – no, how think does Norville do his depth charts? Did I think – well, he, they do wide receiver one, wide receiver two. They I, don't do uh, slow. I don't think they – do they might i i, 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 the, I this past did, year but... this past year they had the tailback they had the two run, yeah they did they, they it was the, the two they had, back they had the running back the tailback and then they had the uh the, the tight end they had wide receiver one wide receiver two and i can't remember if they had wide receiver three but they didn't list it as x slot, Z, yeah. slot that kind so of let's, stuff man. let's assume one back set three receivers uh left to right left being your is left traditionally your wide receiver one for, or is that well, they run a, they run a ton of trips though. So, I mean, it's, yeah. well, it, they, they have would... three different in the Boston college one. They have three different wide receiver positions listed. Um, but the fact that McLean and parchment are grouped together tells me that they're, they're somewhat doing it by position. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so what, I mean, ideally I, who's your three, who's right, your who, top three, who's my top three. Um, I mean, and probably, this, this this does a fair bit of projection as well, too, probably, right? Because you got all these new receivers in for the spring, yeah. so we are projecting a little, prognosticating a little bit. I mean, it's right now. It's probably McLean, Pittman, and Wright, because I think they're going to use the Wilson kid as like a hybrid tight end type deal. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So you think potentially all four of those guys could be on the field, and then spans the kid that's going to come in. Maybe be like a deep ball specialist to start off, depending on how well he develops. Is that kind yeah. of what you see? Yeah, I think he's he's gonna take he's gonna. I think he and McLean will probably pair together and play a lot, uh, oh, back yeah. in, you know back and forth there. I wouldn't be surprised if if you saw someone like uh, Span be moved to the slot. Um, Interesting. Just like just you know motioned in, and then you you see that slot fade. Maybe get him running those deep balls. Get him one on one. And the That's air raid, in the air raid there, system, dude. a lot of times uh, the X or the Z receiver will be uh, just on the outsides, and they'll just be what's called alerts. So pre-snap, think, if you see think, a good matchup. I think we're really going to need to go back and look at Memphis uh, this offseason because I think that we're going to start to see a little bit more of that yeah. coming together. Agreed. Good Probably teams, a lot more posts. And we will. Right. We will. And I think spring ball is going to illuminate a lot of this stuff, mm-hmm. too. But I'm with you. Wright's going to be one of the top three receivers on the field just from that film right there. Just yeah. the amount of attention you could see Oklahoma State focusing on him, even as the game kind of went on. Uh, good route runner, good hands, tough, fast, not ideal size, but it hasn't hampered his production at the college level. So I am I'm excited. That was an ass. Good yeah. film. Yeah. Um, Tatum Bethune. Let's talk linebackers. A um a constant pain point is something that we talked to you about on the show over and over and over again. Wasn't all bad. Kalen Deloach, once again, Papa Rob, thank you for him. <laughs> uh, a kid that really developed as the year went on. Um, and the rest of the core, like the Amari Gaynor, DJ Lundy's, they had flashes and they had some tools that you could use like situationally, right? Like we'd see DJ Lundy, really hit the hole on like a run play and blow it up. And on the next one, he'd be lost in coverage. Yeah. Amari Gaynor was, he'd have a great play on the slot on the, I mean, in the outside, maybe defending like a swing pass, blowing up a screen. And then he would kind of get out of position. So we had one, I guess I would call Kalen Deloach a complete linebacker at this point with the way he's progressed. We have one complete linebacker and then pieces of others. Let's look at Tatum Bethune and see, do we have a two complete linebackers on this defense? Or is it going to be another kid where we're going to have to work in situationally? Let's watch that beautiful bean footage. Roll the Bethune, Kevin. Yeah, so this Against is uh, Florida. UCF Fun. versus Florida. We're just going to be looking at the defensive play, so we'll have to kind of skip through the offensive place for UCF. So They use him a lot of different ways. He, they bring him on the blitz. They... Drop what number coverage. is he for F- 15? Yeah, this is him. Yeah, he's a he's a guy dropping. But as it stands now, those those hips are just the ability for him to get back that quickly and face the quarterback and drop zone coverage. Um so I've watched I've watched a couple of his games. Yeah, what um, do you think, Adam? What, I, what do you I, think you I think he's more instinctive dropping. Like I think he like comparing him to Lundy because that's who I think ultimately I think he's gonna probably take, take his Kalen, yeah take his job. Um, I think he's more instinctive when he drops and he he seems to read the quarterback a little bit better 
um, as far as when he's dropping and kind of gets in that zone and, and plays in a good area. Uh, I don't know how much better of an athlete he is than DJ. Um, I think he's a little bit better of an athlete, but I think he's I don't quicker. Think yeah, I think he's quicker, but I don't think it's like drastically better. Um, I do think that DJ's a better run fitter than this kid is. Yeah, uh, I the, would. The, this young man, I shouldn't call him a kid. He's not a kid. This young man. Um, okay. Yeah. I, I, so I, I think it's. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I, I do think I do think he's a better pass defender. I'm not sure he's as strong of a run defender, but it's certainly not a weakness. I mean, I like 105 tackles last year was their leading tackler. Um, but uh, he makes a lot of plays on his side of the ball that, I, that I've noticed as opposed to. Uh, th- what, what do we think? What happened there? What happened there, guys? Yeah, this is a bad. Pl- I, well, I don't know what their fits are, so I don't want to say it's a bad right. play, but it seems as though they've got the corner blitz in here. It seems as though this ball should probably be spilling. Um, yeah, this guy. I guess this. Well, that's a that's a stunt. Right, he's stunted in. Yeah, yeah. So he's got to fill and expect. Someone's got to spill here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's just. And I think I think Bethune. I think Bethune gets stuck, and it makes him look worse than what is actually there. He's he's just kind of fitting in that gap because look how massive this hole is. Right. I mean, the the corner overran it. Yeah, the corner's uh, too far up here. There's yeah. this, the, the other guy, the guy in the middle, I don't know what his number is. I, I don't know if he's downfield enough or just, there's just a lot of grass there. Yeah, so I, I think Bethune gets kind of stuck here. Yeah, I think these two guys are kind of out misplaying it here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're not really in alignment, right? But you do see the, the lack of straight line speed, I think he... But... Yeah, I, mean, I, he's, I think that's he's, still a... a a significant upgrade over what Lundy might give you on a on a third down passing play. Yeah, I don't I, I don't disagree with you on that. Yeah, I'd have to see more. That that was just to me. It's like a that wasn't really on him, but there wasn't anything too impressive on that one either. I'm, I'm interested you, you, to see like if if this is a kid teams that can run the ball well or if they're going to pick on him in the running game like how DJ Lundy was picked on in the passing game. I don't. He see that that looks like a physical play. Yeah, he's yeah. There he is. <laughs> All right, let me see this. See, I think he's a little slow. Yeah, I mean, well, I, I, he, he 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 seems a little slow to fit there. He's but fine then, with, but then he does do up a, the. Yeah, he he blows up he blows up the block, but he doesn't really shed the block, right? right like right. good 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 initial explosion on the contact, but then he was also he doesn't, he doesn't work off it. Well. This is a lot of the tackles I, I I saw from him five, six, seven, eight yards downfield, which I don't. I don't even know how good the UCF defense was your or defense was this year overall. I'm not sure. I don't pay that much attention I think to he's them here. Yeah, he's the, he's on the edge. They put him up on line of scrimmage. So some. does he rush the passer quite a bit then? Some, yeah, yeah. The size looks good. He doesn't look. He doesn't look like he doesn't belong against this this Florida team that you know. They kind of they kind of bullied us around a little bit. We played him at the, at the end of the year. He doesn't look out of place. I'll say that. No, I, I think at worst, this guy's going to be another linebacker you can substitute in that. Um, ho- it's better than Steven Dix. I know yeah, better much. than Steven Dix. Gives you <sighs> another option. That doesn't say a whole lot. No offense, man. Well, like, I get I, it. I, I get I, it. I, I, I got to see more of this film because this, this was a kid that was pretty. Uh, I'll say he was pretty highly coveted, right? I mean, Miami wanted him bad. Other schools wanted him. Like, it's I'm, – I'm just interested to see how the rest of this game goes. So, there he is in the middle of the field there. Like, I, I like this. This this looks this looks fine to me. No, I, I, I personally think that he is closer to to Deloach than he is to, to Gaynor or Lundy in, in comfort being out on the field for me. Like I, I would be shocked if if Lundy or Gainer started over, over Bethune. Personally. And I'm not sure that's a popular opinion uh, amongst others um, that that cover Florida State. I think well, that what's not a popular opinion that he's that he's going to start over Lundy. Who doesn't think that? Other people don't think that. I, I could tell you. I could tell you that honestly now, just looking I've, at. I've it. heard. I mean, I've heard a couple folks say that out loud. 
It, 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 I had the same reaction. I'm like, really? I, well, I did, like I said, I haven't been blown away, but I see right. I see a more natural linebacker than you yeah, know, DJ Lundy. Now, the, the only reason agree. he may not start is because DJ Lundy's a two down ideal player. So right. I guess on first down, if you're expecting if you're expecting the run, I could see that. I but, mean, uh, look, this play right here. You don't get 105 tackles though no, without being able to play not. the run. No, and he's physical. I just I, I'm right. looking out. Our our linebackers right now are block sponges, right? They are they're magnets for blocks. I want to look at somebody who's shifty and can kind of take the hit, but then also disengage and make the tackle. Well, especially with a defensive line that you're intending to roll out in front of him. I mean, you've got two, you know, fifth year senior, you know, fifth year seniors that are going to be starting in front of him that are pretty stinking talented. Yeah, the tackles are going to keep him clean too. Yeah, so. yeah. So but right here, is, he's... this is as good a, a drop as we've seen. Come, uh, coming out of anybody at Florida State recently. I mean, just look at that. He, so he's way downfield. He takes that route or what? That's not something that Florida State did last year. Besides Deloach, right? what I like here is that he turns his hips as soon as he sees this guy behind him, and he mm -hmm. sees him out of the side of his head. So he still has his eyes on the backfield, and then he's able to turn his hips and follow with this guy. I think that's a high level linebacker play. No, it's good. I mean, a, high, a higher level than what what we've seen. Yeah, I tend to agree with you. I I don't think he's got the straight line speed. I think he probably is like a four eight guy, but his ability, his fluidness of hips, is an improvement over what you have currently. He also seems to diagnose the plays pretty quick. I think so. Uh, just like boom, immediate pass, immediate drop, get to my right area. Well, one of our linebackers still has trouble understanding which gap is his half the time. So, exactly. if, if and that's going to make such a difference, even if you've got a guy that, like, like you said, and we're we're still looking. I'm still looking for like an impressive tackle or something like that. But if you got a guy that's in a position the right time with some of the other talent that you've got on this defense, that's going to make that's going to make a lot of difference. Right, and to me, I think worst case scenario, it it just means that your usable linebacker rotation goes from three to four and I think that's an improvement that's that that's under really underrated Florida's so what does he do here? it's kind of tough to tell his run stopping abilities because Florida for some reason is running the shit I mean passing the shit out of the ball with Emory Jones in this bowl game I did not watch this by the way so <laughs> I just I'm interested by the strategy but yeah they're really passing it a lot there you go I oh, know that's not him yeah that's not him he's the other one gotcha He's covering up the tight end, though, on the sit-down in the middle of the zone, which is pretty damn instinctual, in my opinion. Well, it's interesting because of the way that Florida's playing. The biggest question that we had with our other linebacker, you know, the non kalen Deloach linebackers, is coverage ability. And we're seeing – this is a game that's really showcasing his coverage ability. He's not getting – He's not getting picked on. He's not getting burned. He's always in the right position. He's taking away throws from Emory. Um, I, think, yeah. I think worst case scenario – it, this just means you don't have to see Lundy on a third and ten. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, which I think is a win. <laughs> yeah, big, no, absolutely massive win. And I'm with you. Oof. That is a that is a worst case scenario. That was a nice play. I'd like to see uh, that. I don't yeah, where's that guy? I don't want to. I don't want to acknowledge it. Here, let's see. Let's see if we can get one more defensive uh, series here. Yeah. Then go to the piece de resistance. I think that was your defensive series right here. So, that was it. All right. Well, yeah, here he is. He drops back. Gets his I eyes mean, back on the quarterback. They're clearly not afraid to use him in coverage. So, no, it, it man, he's, he's suggests in the right his strength, spot. right? Yeah, I. He's he seems to be in the right spot over and over. So I'm good with that. I. It's tough to tell because obviously with that condensed game, I feel like maybe a lot of those run stuffs or some of those tackles from him. We didn't get to see because they're they're boring plays. Not to us, condensed game people. Give us more. Give us more. <laughs> trying to build. Trying to trying to get the whole story here. However, if your biggest if your biggest weakness was coverage ability from your linebackers, that was just that whole film. You ain't gonna have to worry about that with this kid, in my opinion. I agree. I agree completely. If, I I, th I, th I think it's a clear upgrade. I don't know if it's a massive upgrade. And I would love another linebacker, but. It, it's definitely a starter starting caliber upgrade. Yeah, I think with uh, the majority, it, 
with the type of quarterbacks you're going to be facing this year, there's a lot of quarterbacks that came back in this conference and specifically our division of the ACC. Having Getting this kid was a big win, in my opinion. Yeah, I it's agree. It's just somebody to close down the middle of the field and just make it tough on those opposing quarterbacks. Now, let's get to somebody that's really going to make it tough on some opposing ACC quarterbacks, <laughs> and that's Albany, Great Dane, Virtuoso, Jared Verst. <laughs> This kid, I'm, I'm really interested to go through the film because we're going we're gonna to evaluate this out kind of like Mike Norvell's staff did. They saw Albany play Syracuse, and boom, pow, superstar. Jared Verse popped off the screen for a number of different reasons that we're all going to see here. Now, listen, is he the next Jermaine Johnson? Let's hope so. Who, who even knows, dude? Jermaine Johnson, that kid did so good and came out of almost seemingly nowhere. We were really high on him, but even we didn't predict that type of season. It was almost like kind of like a Haley's Comet thing. Like yeah. this kid could have a great season and still not touch the impact that Jermaine Johnson did. And he could be on a far more successful Florida State team because of the upgrades and talent that Mike Norvell's done in the transfer portal. So let's see. I will say the clips that I've seen of him. The athleticism is really, really impressive. And this is a kid that what has two, does he two years of eligibility left or three? three out of three, three, three years. years. Uh, I don't think I think he's good enough to where I don't think he's going to be here all three years. Um, this kid's got some tools. Let's just go to the film. This was the a huge, ma- this was a massive win. He had like thirty five offers. Like you name it, they offered him. USC, Texas, Miami, Tennessee, like Ohio legit, State, Ohio State, <laughs> Ohio State, like. Getting this kid was huge. This is arguably, he's like what, like a top five, top three portal player yeah, of the, the entire one, portal. Number so one end, number one end in the portal, and the, yeah, yeah, top five overall. What, I think what, what number is he? Is he ninety five, ninety six? No, he actually he's the one on the bottom. He's ninety six. This is him. Ninety six. Okay. They have another defensive end that has some some size. That's not a bad player, but he's just you see here. Syracuse knows right off. Long as hell. There's a five-man protection. Albany's trying to get um, man man matchup here on the outside. Syracuse uh, slides into a double team. Double teams With back the help, yeah. With back help right there too. Right. He kind of he kind of rushes himself into that mess. Yeah. So. You'll see this a lot uh, with <clears throat> part of Syracuse game plan was to Run away take him him. out by reading him, right? So when you got a special player like that, you kind of take him out of the equation. He's in the middle here. Whether he chooses running back or quarterback, he's wrong. You kind of take him out of the play. The nice yeah, job of squeezing that. Yeah, but doesn't he wasn't out of position, just he had no help from his defender. I'm sure Correct. his guy was getting like mauled. But no, he's worried. That's That's how I'd want a defensive end to play that play, right? Yeah, I mean, it de- it depends on what you're trying to do, but um, in general, you squeeze down, take away any route by the quarterback, and then give an option for yourself to run out to the edge. All right, run that back, because I'm, I'm trying to make sure I see where he's at first. And then... He's up at the top of the screen. He's at the top. Good telestration, brother. Thanks. <laughs> it's right, good. So it's that's not great there. I mean, he gets up the field and then turns his shoulders. I don't love that. You can you... Play that a little bit better. Yeah, so the thing I see with Verse is that um, the guy is insanely talented, but he is he is a little he is more raw than Jermaine Johnson was coming in, which makes a lot of sense. Yes. Yeah. So they got back on him there and the tackle. Yeah. Double teaming him. It's pretty. I feel what's that a draw, Adam? QB draw. Yeah. It's a pretty common theme you'll see in this game. They're either reading him or trying to double team him somehow. Um, but you'll you'll see his athleticism come out as the game goes on. Uh, definitely not a full indication of what you're getting so far. He's at the top of the screen. They're reading him again. Touchdown, Syracuse. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're, which is what you'd expect when the mighty correct. Great Danes of Albany go on the road to Syracuse. Absolutely, he should he be looks, a little bit further inside here, but he looks like a monster. Yeah, that's what I was just about to say, dude. That does that does not look like an Albany player. 
I'm interested to see what happened, like how he slipped through the cracks to get to that. I guess he was real undersized going there. Well, not That's His first step's freaking good. I can tell you that much. Yeah, he does. He's he's in he the backfield. A, he gains a like shitload immediate. of ground. They they I don't they should never stand him up. So here he is. They're reading him on this side of the field. This is just a a zone read uh, where, again, he's going to be wrong either way. Uh, so he stays out on the quarterback, probably like he's told to do. They give it, but I think this is the play. So watch him here. Will you put that foot in the dirt? Syracuse running back has a full head of steam. Good lord! <laughs> How big is this kid? Uh, I think he's what six six five, two fifty, something like that. Yeah, something something like that. Yeah, Sean Tucker dude. was legitimately one of the best running backs in the entire conference. Yeah, he will be yep. facing this running back again next year. Yep. No, didn't he? Didn't he transfer? No. Oh, maybe. I I don't I do I don't know, but I know that the fact that he almost hawked this <laughs> dude down. <laughs> he is outrunning big, his own safety. That's a big son of a bitch, and the way he he has got he smoked his own DB. And the effort too, right? He's, yeah, you got like that. Yeah, so so while That's, you do see some things where you're just questionable, that kind of athleticism doesn't grow on trees. No, he's oh. still raw. He's still raw. He's a kid that's gonna. You're like you're happy to get him in for the spring, get him in your weight program. That's a nice oh. move. Oh, that's a nice dip, like that. Yeah, man. Yep. He's, his hands are going to get better. His hands are not great here. He's not really he's not really getting control, but he's just so athletic. He that's an area where Jermaine Johnson, I don't know if he'd say underrated, but he, he had great he had really, really good hands as far as like the hand fighting and the disengaging yeah. and stuff. This kid with that type of speed and that type of get off, once he refines those skills, and we'll see. I mean you can, you gotta give credit to Papuchis for, you know, um Absolutely. widening the toolkit that Jermaine Johnson had. And it, he's going to have a lot of fun with Jared Verse, I think. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Oh, God. Go. That's blew a, by that kid. Beautiful. Uh, that was yeah, better I mean, with his hands there. Yeah. No, he's, That's, I say he's raw, but he, he still should come in and be be a mm-hmm. very, very serviceable defensive end just based off of this. That Albany's sucks a, that Albany's they got, got a good football team. They're, they're, not, they're not bad. Well, they got a, they had a hell of a defensive end last year, dude. He is he's so quick. It's not like Devito's in the pocket that long either for this play to develop. Drop him down. Yeah, he gets kind of gets a hold of the tackle's chest. It looks like, and drags him down. That's <laughs> yeah, that's good, man. So for all of you guys thinking, oh, he's I mean he's just at Albany, this is this is against a Syracuse team that almost beat you last year. Well, I can tell you what, he, he I, I you could say that he's just at Albany, but I mean we're watching the same film. He this does not look like an Albany football player. <laughs> and that's what the entire country thought based on his offer sheet. Yeah. No, this is a huge get. To me, this is this is single handedly worth five ten points SP plus. Or five ten rankings. Well, I don't know what the hell that guy did out there. Um, that was good. More power there. Tried to affect the, you know, the, not the sh- crappy tackle attempt, but no, he, you know, tried to affect the play there. Fought into the, fought into the tackle. Nothing super impressive, but it it just showed that he's not just like a twitchy kind of speed specialist guy that can only run around the that can only run around the tackle, right, right guys? Like he's not. He's absorbing contact. He's setting the edge. Here is a little bit in the run game. Not not very well there, but no, no, that one wasn't great. Again, he, I, I I think he's got a lot of his best football in front of him. So we're going to see some of this. Like he's not going to be a finished product this year. Like Jermaine, a lot of times was, I don't want to say perfect, but pretty spot on uh, throughout a game uh, this last year. You're, that's not what. That's not going to be the case with Burst because he's. But that's Jermaine Johnson. Went through Georgia. Went through JUCO. Jermaine Johnson's right. what, twenty-two years old or something yeah. like that. He had the one year left. This. Yeah, this, this is a fun piece. This of is mold. a building block. There's the bull rush. Absorbed pretty well. Yeah. Not sure. Great speed to power there, but again, getting himself into a. 
you know, a, a Florida State weight program as opposed to an Albany one. Oh, man, you know, they're, third and 28. They're going to help he, him develop that. He's also, I mean, it, his team around him is not fantastic here. He's also yeah. affecting every single play that he's in on, right? Um, yeah. I don't see any. I don't see any issues with like conditioning or motor either, man. Like I, obviously, dude, you try to hawk down that running back, but <laughs> no, these are fun. These are fun tools to play with. And uh, worst comes to worst, what he's going to do is just his athleticism is going to force teams to to try to double team him or try to scheme around him, even if he's he's not a finished product. And if if we want to talk about Jermaine, um, even Jermaine had a little bit of trouble in the running game we documented it throughout the season that yep um, correct correct oftentimes these these traditional three four three defensive ends are just a little lanky and it's a little bit easier to get up into their chest into their shoulder pads and so um and also with the amount of rpo and zone reading and taking those guys out i mean hesitation is going to be implanted in the back of their mind too as well right like it's you don't recognize run immediately so i get it Especially being the, the the clearly the best player on your team at Albany, it's like they, they've game planned their entire offense to neutralize you. Yeah, that's nice. Let's move back inside. It'll be real interesting to see see what Papuchas does because yeah, the hand fighting can come along, and so we'll see if. Uh, kind of a little bit if Jermaine Johnson was more of a finished product than we knew coming out of Georgia or if um, that was Papuchas' work. And I'll tell you a lot. Dude, there's a lot of punting going on like in this condensed game. So there's a whole bunch of like plays for one gain or no gain or plus two or minus one that we're not seeing right now. So I Yeah, they tend to I, cut I, out first and second down. Which, you know, for when you're evaluating defensive players, we'd like to see that. Um Biggest thing I'm seeing out of him is he's going to have to develop the power side of his game. Speed, the speed seems to be there. The the initial quickness and all that seems to be there. I just think he's got to develop that power side. Here he gets hold, held. Holded. Holded. Yes. Holded. It. Listen, dude, this isn't the grammar option, Adam. This is the triple option. So let's get that conjunction, junction bullshit out of here and let my guy Kev fly, okay? Enough. You're going you're gonna to throw strays at your own guy like that. Well, I love Kev. Come on, man. I kind of like what they do stray. here. If I can't throw a stray, nobody can. He's going to stop telestrating for you, Adam, I promise. <laughs> well, I'm in big trouble. <laughs> this defensive tackle co- goes out to the to the offensive tackle to try to occupy him. Which kind of gets a man on man out here with first, which is nice. But then he doesn't realize that he's left free. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> oh no! Another. Play. Oh no! That's how you know you're Albany playing at Syracuse. Yeah, dude. It's here. It is. Uh, yeah, just a little bit of strength uh, right there could could really rip through that and and make. But it also, if he could have it. any help on the opposite side, <laughs> right? If any of his guys on the right side of the defensive line could do anything, I, I feel for this kid, man. Uh, I think the support and offseason for him. I think he's got a chance to make a take a leap and they need um they need another defensive end transfer, in my opinion. But I think he's gonna pair nicely if they move Dennis Briggs to the outside. Um, all those plays that verse is kind of funneling to the opposite side in this game with his athleticism. Dennis Briggs is going to hold up and set that edge and be there to clean it up. So yeah. I think that makes an actual pretty nice combination, in my opinion. They still need somebody else, but. Yeah, it's. I think it's a little bit easier to find that guy that's going to fit that Fox role than the traditional 4-3 hyper-athlete yes, the, the, rush the defense twitchy, bend. The put the pressure on the quarterback, that especially, that's, there's such a premium on that. I'm with you too, Kev. I think we have some guys that can fill the Fox serviceable enough, especially with the help that they're going to get on the interior from Cooper and love it to where uh, the fact that you got this guy in the boat for spring, he's on campus, he's doing strength and conditioning now. God, dude, this is a big win. This is a big win for Norvell and his staff. I would not move Briggs outside. You wouldn't. Okay. Would not. What if I, they don't get another defensive end transfer of note? Well, then you then you screwed up. Okay. <laughs> so you're not there you you're go. not there yet. You're not there no. yet to move him out. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't think it's a good move. I think he's I think he showed himself as an elite 
and I do mean elite, not not serviceable, not good. I thought he was an elite interior pass rusher. Those are really hard to find. Hey, that's a fair point. And that's and like you said, hopefully you get another transfer defense, then you don't have to worry about it. You keep on developing Derek McClendon, Quayshawn Fuller. Right. Um, Pat, Pat, Pat Payton, George Wilson. Yeah. I, well, it, well, well, we'll the Wilson kids got... supposedly can't keep weight on, but who knows whether that's true or not. Right. They're young. They're young guys. But look, I mean, you got to develop your freaking roster some, too. And that's fair. That's fair. Because you just like you said, you're just shifting money from the left right. pocket to the right pocket. Right. So I get you there. There's there's also good news in the fact that uh, Bethune potentially lets you move one of those linebacker bodies to the Fox yep. if that's something maybe, that you're uh, maybe interested Gainer's, in doing. <laughs> maybe Gainer finds himself up at the line of scrimmage a little bit more. Yeah, I think that's such a natural role for Gainer to just yeah, straight never... line get into the backfield, but I, I don't know if they can convince him that Fox is a linebacker position. No. Just call it a 3-4 linebacker. I don't know. Yeah, just figure it out. Just dude. play the tight front, darn it. Yeah, we want to see some tight. Darn it. Kev, draw right. the tight front up for the people so they see what we're talking about. And all then right. let's get out of here. Give me a second. <laughs> yeah, we will bring this up all off season. Yes, because we want this move to happen more. All right, let's see. While he's drawing it up, verbally explain it, my my friend. Oh, I mean, it's basically more of a three down type uh, front. And you play with uh, your two, you're going to play with more of a true nose and you're going to play with your two tackles. Uh, on the inside shade of the offensive tackles. Um, and then you're you're only going to play with one linebacker behind them. And then, I mean, it's basically like a 5-1, I guess, if you want to call it that, um, or 4-1. Any notable teams that run that now? Georgia. In college? Okay. Well, there you <laughs> Georgia. Go. Georgia, hey, Georgia and Notre noted. Dame. And everybody's going to say, well, Georgia's got an elite defensive line. Yes, they do. But I think Florida State's got three Good really enough. Good Really, yeah. really freaking good defensive tackles also. Yeah. All right. So let's see. He's got it. Wow. That was quick, buddy. Nice. Yeah, I, I can't change these these letters though. Um so that's okay. You'll have we've to deal smart, with it. We've got no, we have a very learned fan base. I'm sorry. I said one linebacker. I meant to. I apologize. You meant to. Of course you I did. did. That's fine. Yeah. So, so the so, tackles are playing what what is that? A four I? Is that the name of that? Yeah, this is a four eye inside eye inside shoulder of the tackle of the offensive tackle. I don't know why I'm in black, but here you go. I think this is what they tried to run against Miami two years ago. Clemson? No, FSU. We ran Remember it they, against Clemson two years ago. Mm -hmm, but we ran it against Miami, and Miami scored eight thousand points. But that was more because of who you were trying to play. <laughs> Or who you were trying to play at linebacker and all, you know, your deficiencies there. And Corey Durden what, didn't bother to get in the stance half the time and yada, yada, yada. But I think I think this is a good move for them. I hope they are listening. Mike, if you're listening, come talk Why to us. Why is it a good move? Come talk to us. Why is it a good move? And who do you see at these positions? Uh, uh, why is it a good move? All right, so you're down three. I think it's Briggs, Cooper, love it. Um, you know, yeah. and you could, I think you could roll a verse in there. If you needed to, I think you could play a, a McClendon in there. You could play a Fuller in there. I think you'd put Verse here sometimes against, mm -hmm. yeah, to get a pass rush. I just think this. I think this gets your best eleven on the field because you're going to be able to play. I think you could play more of your hybrid secondary guys on that back end because this is really built to stop the run. Uh, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you know, or t the run game that you're going to see is going to be you know, exterior run game, you know, outside right. zone, stretch, that kind of stuff, which again, I think is going to play to the strength of your defense, which is all these fast guys in the secondary that are hybrid guys. Right. Jamie Robinson's coming back. Bethune would be, instead of having to muck up a lot of stuff on the middle, you get him in space along with yeah. the loach. You don't have huge linebackers. That'd be interesting. But that end spot, you say you Jared verse there, but is that something to where like you'd put like, you guys were talking about like Amari Gaynor, maybe like DJ Lundy. There yeah, too. I, mean, I think yeah. there's potential for all those names. Or even like if you want to do a dime package, it's really easy with Kevin. Like, let's say Jamie Robinson, Kevin Knowles, you know. Mm -hmm. um, Your two slot guys right there. Yeah, that's what a lot of teams do with this is they'll put. Greedy, you can put Greedy Vance out there. Right. They'll have 
they'll have both of these guys being more of a Jamie Robinson, like true nickel. Um, mm -hmm. Because the advantage of doing this, the way this is set up with the three down linemen and the four I is you're really plugging these gaps with the minimal amount of people, which allows you to have a little bit more speed on the outside. Yep. It allows you to not have to worry as much about having, um, you know, you can, you can kind of plug up these gaps and have speed elsewhere. Whereas Let's if take, you... Any notable examples of us, and th this is like our base from last year, what you're switching it to right now, right, Kev? Yeah, this is this is more of like a a four three. Although this is kind of backwards, I'd probably be yeah, like, like you this. know four two five whatever. Um, any notable examples of that that tight front that you just diagrammed that we used last year? I know you used some stuff from twenty twenty, but anything any they, games from twenty twenty one where they used it? I don't I don't think they ran. They didn't. They might have run some odd in like some pass rush situations, but I don't remember. I don't recall them running it at all on like standard downs no they wanted Kier and jermaine on the outside. yeah which makes All, sense but i think yes. you lost those two guys you're looking for ways to replace them um you know i think that this is an opportunity to make a minor scheme change i'd like to maybe who the hell am i i don't know no no no, no. i like that well, maybe we'll do some homework look at uh Adam Fuller's discography and see if he's got that, uh, if he's got that beat in his repertoire. I'd be interested to see that. Cause I do naturally, I do. I mean, it fits some of the personnel and I mean, the easiest way is to, to replace Jermaine Johnson is, Oh, just go get another Jermaine Johnson. But it's not, it's not quite that plug and play. There's going to be, uh -oh. you need to get good guys. Like you got Jared verse, but there also may need to be some schematic tweaks. All right. Let's round it up. That was good. I didn't think we'd get there, but we're organic with the triple option. We take it wherever the conversation goes, as true professionals would. <laughs> so I'm excited about all three of these guys. Winston Wright, he's the real deal, dude. Yep. I, I yeah. love the route running, love the hands, yep. love the speed, love the toughness. Tougher. I, I didn't realize he was as tough as he was. And we didn't even show you guys the special teams. Kid is a dynamite kickoff returner. He's awesome. Tatum Bethune. Um... He is a clear upgrade in his passing coverage skills and awareness. Two things that we continually, every single video, talked about as being a weakness that was picked on by Florida State linebackers. That kid, <clears throat> he's not a Marvin Jones, he's not a Derek Brooks, but I can tell you what, he is an absolute serious upgrade in those areas where we were deficient last year. So to me, I think that's the plus. Um Questions to be answered, but a really good pickup, in my opinion. And then Jared Verse, you guys saw what we saw. Um, not a finished product yet, but, dude, really, really elite tools. And a guy that was highly sought after because no shit, duh. Like, you guys saw the same plays that we saw. That kid has – he's got potential. He's got really, really high potential. And yeah. um, it'll be interesting. I, like I said. Adam Fuller, Papuchis, all those guys on the defensive side of the ball, they got some tools to work with here. So it's going to be interesting to see Florida State is not done in the transfer portal. No, um, I don't even know if I need to say that, but no, they are still <laughs> actively evaluating options. We will be here to break them down, but um, they've been doing pretty damn good, man. Yeah, like, there's not a lot to flipped. complain about there. No, I really don't. I mean, we'll, we'll see. There's some there's some positions of interest for people, that other end spot, um, the tackle, the other elusive tackle that Florida State needs to take. I mean, they showed that they could get a high-value, highly desired money position in that defensive injury or adverse. Can they do it at tackle? We'll see. A uh, quarterback. What are they going to do? A quarterback. That's always fun. Um, and There's something that's been lots of eyeball emojis floating around there in the old null space today. We'll, yeah. so we'll see what a lot that of stuff out going. There. A lot of stuff on social media. <laughs> oh yeah. We'll be here to cover it all because we love Florida State football, but more importantly, we love you. We love you, our supporters, yeah. our listeners, searches, our searches. viewers. Thank you all. Thank you to Tomahawk Nation for presenting this wonderful product. A uh, great site to be on. And we're happy to be a part of the TN fam. Um, go to the Patreon. Give Kevin some money. You're looking pretty nice, dude. Uh, I see maybe a, a new throw pillar or two back there. So everybody's checks are clearing a little <laughs> bit. Kev's looking a little bit more classy, but give him more money, guys. He's a great guy. He needs more money. Um, 
YouTube, you're probably already subscribed. If you're not, I just I won't respect you as a, a person or just somebody I want in my life. So you don't <laughs> want that kind of guilt thrown on you. So subscribe to the YouTube, turn your subscriptions on. Tell your friends, spread the word of mouth. Honestly, we we look at your Kevin and Adam dutifully read all of your YouTube comments, which are surprisingly positive in the day and age of cesspool social media that we're in right now. You guys are the best and we love you. And it genuinely seems, I think my favorite comments are to read are somebody told you about me or this is the first video I've watched. Your content is genuinely unique and it kicks ass. So just tell your friends about us. If you think it'd be something they're interested in, spread the, spread the gospel of the triple option, but guys, um, a lot of good stuff going on. We'll be here the whole time to discuss it. As always, for Adam, Kevin, keep chopping, boys. Just never stop chopping.